According to all known laws of aviation, there is no way the Hive Knight should be able to fly. Its wings are, uh... Huh. He doesn't have wings. Hive Knight! They were gonna call him Hornet, but that name was trademarked or something. It's funny, he sure does feel like Hornet, and not just for the obvious reasons. This is another instance of a boss with variable health based on our nail upgrades. There's not much more to say about him without getting into his attacks though, so let's do just that. Starting with the lunge! The hidden stinger! The leap! The honey burst! And the swarm! The lunge is much of what we've come to expect from just about any boss who wields a weapon. This kind of straightforward dash should be second nature to you by this point. Jump as soon as you see his wind-up animation, and then pogo off his head to keep the damage up. The hidden stinger makes the Hive Knight stand apart from a lot of bosses, as most who are capable of teleporting will use teleportation as their primary means of movement. But, for this bumbly boy, it's more of a mix-up. It's not too threatening, though, as from the moment he disappears, you already know exactly what attack he's about to use, and can jump overhead just like the lunge with time to spare. This attack will, however, always begin at the same height as the knight, and it can be just a bit tougher to avoid if it starts up in the air. Dashing away or underneath are both viable options, but the main defense against this is to try and avoid jumping if you're between attacks. The leap is a jump like any other, used both to move about and to target the knight directly. This one feels a little slower than some of the others we've had to deal with, but you know the drill here. Dash beneath, not away from. He'll start using the Honey Burst once he gets down to 780 HP. And this is up there with the Broken Vessel's Outbreak as one of the scariest looking attacks to dodge that we've yet seen. Not helped at all by the fact that the Hive Knight will take action shortly after they start bursting. There are a couple tricks that can make it much more manageable, though. First of all, notice how they never spawn at ground level. That means, as long as you don't jump, all 15 of the spikes facing horizontal or higher aren't things you need to worry about. Secondly, the order that they burst in is set not random. It will always start with whichever one is lowest, and go in order from lowest to highest. That means the only one you need to be paying attention to immediately is the bottom one. I recommend hanging out inside this triangle here while figuring out where the other spikes are gonna go. Thirdly, the attack he does immediately following this up is fixed. Pay attention and you'll see that it's always the leap. Never the dash, never hidden stinger. This is another thing that makes the ground relatively safe, and you may even be able to heal off a sneaky mask if you find a good spot. Finally, don't forget about your ground pound spell. If it feels like too much, just hide behind some invincibility frames to give yourself some breathing room. Inconsequentially, it is possible to hit the spike clusters in order to move them around before they burst, but honestly, you want to be as far away from them as you can get, so I wouldn't mess with this. Finally, the swarm is also a superimposing attack with tons of projectiles, which he'll add to his lineup at 550 HP. After releasing the Hivelings into the air, they'll begin descending from the top of the screen, one at a time, for a total of seven. They all lightly home in on the knight, and though they can be hit for soul, they can only be destroyed with spells, which doesn't help us too much right now. Like Honey Burst, it can feel overwhelming to try focusing on the descending bees and the hive knight, but once again, put those pattern recognition skills into practice, and you'll notice that he always follows up the swarm with a lunge, and he always follows that up with a leap. That means that if you start dodging this attack in the air, you don't even need to pay attention to the Hive Knight. Of course, you can always use your ground pound on this attack too, especially since the long windup is a great opportunity to build up some soul. The windup of this attack also serves as a decent opportunity for you to heal if you need. That felt like quite a lot with those last two attacks, but we made it through. On to the game plan. We've got another one that calls for constant offense. Since he doesn't have any means of walking or running along the ground, every method he can use to move towards us is heavily telegraphed. So, you're free to stay in his face and wail on him. His windups for the lunge and the hidden stinger are extremely distinct, so just jump whenever you see either, and that'll take you right through to the point where he starts using Honey Burst and Swarm. Those two attacks will necessitate you let up in favor of dodging, but jump right back in as soon as you're clear. The Hive Knight can also be staggered. Normally this would be a great time to heal, but due to the large windups of Honey Burst and Swarm, you'll almost certainly stagger him right when he uses those attacks. He'll go down, but the spike clusters or hivelings that he summoned will remain as they usually would. So healing may not be an option. I do recommend using this time to dodge without hitting him out of his stagger though, as it's just one less thing to worry about. Now, here at the end, what painstakingly obvious joke should I make? Make him buzz off? Be confident? Keep pulling through? Eh, enough of me droning on. Let's just do this. Of course, like every scaling HP foe we've fought in the game, here in God Home, his HP does not scale to your nail. He's at 850. 
which is less than his possible maximum if you ever if you had fought him back in the hive with uh yeah jeez <laughs> if you fought him back in the hive with the maximum upgraded nail I don't know why I keep doing the upward one but overall still pretty simple Now, he does have a bit of an interesting change here in the Ascended difficulty fight. Apart from having much more HP, he now begins the phase in his... L or the fight in his last phase, or having all of his attacks available to him, including the bees and the spike bursts. Now, what's special about the bees is that now that we have the Abyss Shriek, we can actually make slight use of the fact that the bees can be destroyed with spells. At least more so than we could before, since we can use the Abyss Shriek to take down any that are coming down above us. It doesn't help too much, it's, uh, and I'd still recommend using Descending Dark more, but it is definitely an option. And now on to the most rad of Radiance! As usual, the only change from Ascended is the damage that he does, which is, of course, unlimited. And, while we're doing a relatively simple boss fight here, I do think I want to talk a little bit more about how the Radiant boss fights fit into my difficulty formula. Because, obviously, for those of you who, who have stuck around long enough... Uh-oh. And, for those of you who did your homework and actually read all my notes on the subject way back when we covered Hornet, you may recall that damage is multiplied onto the rest of the formula to get the overall difficulty stat. And obviously, if I'm... jeez. Uh, if I multiplied infinity onto the formula, then every single Radiant boss would be infinitely difficult. So, strictly speaking, for the purposes of the difficulty formula, I'm calculating the Radiant boss fights at doing 9 damage, or the maximum number of masks you can have. Goodness gracious! And technically, even though that's the most masks, normal masks we can have, they can do much more damage than that with a single hit. The actual damage value coded into the game is unknown to me, but they can take you all the way down, even if you maximize your health with lifeblood, going all the way across the screen. But, because they do infinite damage, you'd have no reason to prepare for them with lifeblood. Jeez, be careful of those last few bees. So, the most damage, unless you're doing something completely irrelevant, that they would be doing to you is 9. Therefore, I've chosen the number 9. Maybe a little arbitrary, but it works for me. Thanks for putting up with some light memeing on boss splits today. Now, the Kingdom's Edge probably has more bosses than any other individual area in Hollow Knight, if you don't count God Home, so we're gonna be here a little while. Next up is the rematch against Hornet.